So I was looking around on YouTube the other day and I saw this thumbnail by Antagma and I thought, damn, that's nice. I want to make that too. So I fired up Blender, I clicked on the video and... Uh, oh, it's for Houdini? Well anyway, that got me thinking, is this effect possible to do in Blender 2? Well yeah, so let's do it. First, let's set up the scene. Delete everything and press Shift A to add an icosphere. Down here in the bottom left corner, set the subdivisions to 1. This will be the base object that we add the geometry nodes modifier to. Next, duplicate the mesh with Shift D and press M and choose new collection to add it to a separate collection. Rename it to something like available on page. Rename it to something like fractal instance to keep our scene organized. And then disable the collection. Alright, that's all we need for now. Let's do some Geo Notes magic. Go to the Geometry Notes workspace up here and press new to add a Geometry Notes modifier to the object. Press Shift A and add a point instance node. What this does is that it instantiates an object on whatever points we tell it to. And usually when you're working with point instancing, you use a point scatter node first to scatter some points to use for instancing on the geometry. But for this effect, we want to use the base object's vertices. And we can do that by just adding the point instance node. And it will use the object's vertices by default. On the point instance node, select the fractal instance object in the dropdown to instantiate it on the points of the base mesh. Alright, next thing we need is the point scale node. And we add that before the point instance node so we can control the scaling or size of the instance objects. I found that a scale of 0.4 works best for this shape, especially as we add more iterations. Now, you might have noticed that the base mesh is no longer there. That's because this node tree is overwriting it with new geometry. But that's okay. We can bring it back with the join geometry node and plug both this and this into the input. Notice that the input of this node is not circular, which means that we can plug in as many nodes as we want into it and have them all joined for the output. In essence, we can work with many different layers of geometry and still have them join as one at the end. Last thing we need to do is to control the scaling over many iterations, and the way I do it is by adding a combined XYZ node and a math node. Set the math node to power and drag these two inputs to separate inputs in the Yeo node's input node. With the input node selected, press N to open the property sidebar and rename this input to scale factor and this input to iteration. After that, connect the math node to both X, Y and C in the combined XYZ node and connect that node to the scale of the point scale node. Alright, now that we're done with the node setup, we just have to go to the modifiers tab and duplicate the existing geometry nodes modifier, and in the iteration field replace the 1 with the 2, to get the correct scaling of the new iteration. To get more levels of complexity, we just have to repeat the process of duplicating the modifier and increasing the iteration value by 1. Keep in mind though that there's a limit to the number of iterations Blender can handle, and for me that number is 4. And finally, to get the awesome spindle look, we need to add a wireframe modifier at the bottom of the modifier stack. However, I would recommend turning off the viewport visibility of at least the last iteration before doing so, to make it easier to work with and reduce lag. Set the wireframe thickness to relative and increase it to a value that you like. I find that 0.06 works well at this scale. And there you go, fractals in Blender. A quick side note in case you've already made a switch to the alpha of Blender 3.0. The node tree for this effect is a little bit different, but the concept is still the same. Here's an image of that in case you want to try it out there too. Now, what's cool with this setup is that it works with any mesh, and you can even combine different meshes to create new and interesting shapes. And since we can control the scale independently on each iteration, we have a lot of control of the final product. So yeah, get creative. <laughs>